I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about a clinical practice guideline from the American Academy of Family Physicians on blood pressure targets and hypertension. There are very few things that we treat more often than hypertension, so you'd think we'd have been clear on this a long time ago. Well, around 10 years ago, in 2014, JNC 8 recommended target blood pressures for individuals under 60 to be less than 140 over 90. And for those above 60, less than 150 over 90. Then in 2017, based primarily on the SPRINT trial, a trial that included individuals either with existing ASCVD or at high risk of ASCVD, the American Heart Association's hypertension guidelines recommended a target blood pressure less than 130 over 80 for most individuals. The guidelines themselves are a little more nuanced than that, but most of, most of us don't really remember the nuance. I've written about my reservations with that statement in the American Heart Association's journal, Circulation. Now, the American Academy of Family Physicians has updated its recommendations, and they recommend a systolic blood pressure less than 140 over 90 as the target. These are not small differences because it often takes additional medicines to achieve lower blood pressure targets, and additional medications lead to, of course, additional side effects. I'm going to share with you some details from the new guidelines from AAFP, and then I'm going to share my opinion. The AAFP guidelines apply to adults with hypertension with and without underlying cardiovascular disease. In the comprehensive literature review, the trials that they looked at had an average of 3.7 years, and about 75% of the patients in the trials did not have pre-existing cardiovascular disease. The key to the AAFP recommendations is that target blood pressures lower than 140 over 90 did not show a statistically significant decrease in total mortality. With regard to serious adverse events, though, lower targets led to a nominal increase, not reaching statistical significance. Uh, serious adverse events were defined as death, events that required hospitalization, or that resulted in significant disability. With regard to all adverse events, including syncope and hypotension, there was a significant increase with a relative risk of 1.44, meaning a 44% increase in adverse events when lower blood pressure targets were used. This reflected an absolute increased risk of 3% compared to the standard target group. If we look at the absolute risk, that was about 10% versus 7% in the, in the two groups. And that left a number needed to harm of 33 over 3.7 years. Another potential uh, harm of lower blood pressure targets is the need for an average of one more additional medication to reach those targets. One systematic review that the AAFP guidelines cited showed an eightfold higher withdrawal rate due to adverse events in the lower target BP group. The AAFP guidelines go on to say that in the comprehensive review of the literature, while there was no difference in mortality or stroke with lower blood pressure targets, there was a small additional benefit observed in MI outcomes, decreasing the incidence of MI by 16% with a number needed to treat over 3.7 years of 137. So that's the background to their decision. Let me now go over the specifics of the AAFP recommendation. AAFP gives a strong recommendation for a standard blood pressure target of less than 140 over 90. They go on to say, grading the next statement as a weak recommendation, that while treating to a lower blood pressure target does not provide additional benefit with regard to mortality, a target blood pressure of less than 135 over 85 can be considered, and I'll emphasize the word considered, to lower the risk of MI, noting that with lower blood pressure comes, as we talked about, increased harms in trying to achieve that lower blood pressure. 
They state that the lower blood pressure target could be considered based on patient preferences and values. My opinion. The AAFP guidelines are incredibly helpful. The difference in the recommendation of the two large societies, the American Heart Association and the American Academy of Family Physicians, stems from two things. It looks like the American Heart Association focused on the composite endpoints in trials like SPRINT, which only included high-risk individuals, and AFP looks at mortality as the driving endpoint in a broader group of individuals that included both high and low-risk patients. In addition, it appears that the two organizations weight differently the importance of adverse events in coming to their conclusions. Clearly, you get more adverse events when aiming for a lower blood pressure target. And in my experience, patients care a lot about adverse events. Interestingly, the International Society for Hypertension recommends an essential blood pressure target of less than 140 over 90 for most individuals. And for those under 65, give an option of an optimal blood pressure of less than 130 over 80. Remember, for certain comorbidities, there are other guidelines out there. The American Diabetes Association this year revised its target BP to less than 130 over 80 for people with diabetes. For prevention of recurrent stroke, guidelines from the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association in 2021 recommend a blood pressure less than 130 over 80, and the International Society for Hypertension as well as the American Heart Association recommend a BP of less than 130 over 80 for individuals with established ASCVD. To repeat though, the main topic for today, a general target that the AAFP guidelines recommend is a target BP of less than 140 over 90. I'm interested in your thoughts about this. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section. I'm Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape. <music>